Hello, in this video, I'll show you how to create a 3D rotating cube with radio buttons to control the rotations using CSS only. To begin, add a div element and apply the cube container class to it. Inside the div, add 6 input elements and set the type to radio. Set the name attribute of each button to cube gallery so we'll put the buttons in the same group. Lastly, add the check attribute to the first radio button so the first radio button will be checked. Then apply the radio button class to all the buttons. For the next part, we'll create the cube. Add a div element after the radio buttons and apply the cube class to it. Inside a cube, add 6 div element for each side of the cube. And then apply the cube side class to all of them. Create a CSS file and add it to the page. In the CSS file, create six variables for the images you want to put on each side. Add the CSS selector for the body, and then set the width and height to match the dimensions of the window. Set the display to flex, justify content center, align item center, and overflow to hidden. This will allow us to center the cube on the screen. Now add the selectors for the cube container, cube, cube side, and radio button. For radio button, set the bottom margin to 5M. This will place the buttons 5M above the cube. For cube container, set the dimensions of the cube to 15M using the width and height. Then set text align to center and perspective to 3 times the cube size. Using perspective will allow us to view the elements in a 3D point of view. For cube, set the width and height to match the container. Position to relative, transform style to preserve 3D and transition duration to 2 seconds. Using transform style preserve 3D will allow us to preserve the 3D transformation while transitioning. Transition duration will help us create the rotation animation. Now for the size of the cube, set the position to absolute. This way we can place each side relative to the cube. Set the width and height to 100%. background color to white, and border to 1 pixel solid black. If we look at the results on the browser, we'll see a square in the center, but there are really 6 squares on top of each other. To create the cube, create a CSS selector for each side using the nth child pseudo class.
We're starting from 1 and ending on 6 because there are 6 sides to the cube. For the first, second, third and fourth sides, use the transform property and then the rotate y function to rotate them in the y axis. For the first, use 0 degrees. Second, use 90 degrees. Third, use 180 degrees. And fourth, use negative 90 degrees. For the fifth and sixth sides, use the rotation x function and rotate the fifth side by negative 90 degrees and the sixth side by 90 degrees. If we look at the results on the browser, there should be a box with a line across the center. This tells us that everything is transformed correctly. If we add some transform rotations to the cube, we'll be able to see the effects easier. They're all stacked on top of each other in the center because the rotate x and rotate y functions will rotate the element relative to the center. To move them to the correct positions, Add a second transform to all the sides with the translate z function. Since the sides are placed in the center, we need to translate it by half the size of the cube. If we look at the result now, we'll see the cube. To add the images, in the cube size selector, set the background position to center and the background size to cover. Then for each of the individual sides, set the background image property with the image variables that was declared. If we look at the results now, the images are placed on each side. Now all we have to do is to add the ability to rotate the cube when we click on a specific radio button. In the CSS file, remove the transform from the cube. Add a selector for the radio button and apply the check pseudo class to it. Then use the tilde symbol to point to the cube element. Set the transition duration to 3 seconds so we'll get the animation effect. Then set the transition timing function. Add the selector 6 more times to represent each of the radio button. Add the mth child pseudo class to each one right before the check pseudo class. Then label them from 1 to 6. This will allow us to track which radio button is in the checked state. If any of the buttons are checked, we want to rotate the cube. For the first radio button, use the transform property and rotate the cube by negative 15 degrees in the x axis and 20 degrees in the y axis. This will give us a small tilt when the browser loads up the cube. For the next ones, Use negative 15 degrees and 180 degrees. Negative 15 degrees and 90 degrees. 
negative 15 degrees and negative 90 degrees negative 105 degrees and 0 degrees and 75 degrees and 0 degrees if we look at the results now and click on the radio buttons our cube will spin to the correct positions. That's all for this video. If you find this video helpful, please give it a like, share, and subscribe to support the channel. See you in the next video.